about vented roofs. Before discussing the ins and outs of vented roofs, let's start with some context and some terminology. We typically categorize roofs by pitch and by their moisture management strategy, which is to say whether the roof is vented or unvented. And these categories apply to both residential and commercial roofs. We can get a bit confused in our terminology here because a lot of times, especially in residential construction, we're not just talking about the roof, we're also talking about the attic. When our roof is unvented, our attic ought to be conditioned, which is to say it should be treated like any other room in the house. So we should mechanically condition the attic just as we do those other rooms in the house. This actually takes design effort though, right? Our attics don't accidentally get included in the conditioned space. We have to deliberately add mechanical conditioning, which is why a lot of people prefer the term conditioned roof or conditioned attic to the term unvented roof or unvented attic because saying conditioned is a cue to in fact provide that conditioning using the mechanical system. Where the terminology gets a bit tricky is that if you have an unvented roof, you're always going to want the attic to be conditioned. But if your roof is vented, your attic is usually unconditioned. But sometimes it's conditioned and sometimes you don't even have an attic, you have vaulted ceilings, right? This will make more sense as we talk through some examples. For now, just know that the terms unvented and conditioned are often used interchangeably and it's perfectly reasonable to ask for clarification when talking about this type of design. We're gonna talk more about vented roofs, the pitched and the low slope kind. That's another confusing thing, by the way. The proper term for roofs that are near flat is low slope. Some people really object to ever saying flat roofs, and they're right, a roof should never be flat. We should always be designing slope into the system to facilitate drainage. But it's also true that saying low slope is really confusing. When we walk on something like a roof or a balcony, we perceive it to be flat, even when it's well drained. I'll probably get a lot of grief for saying this, but I think both terms are flawed and both require the speaker to provide additional clarifying information. So there you go. You can call me a pro slope flat roofer. Anyway, back to vented roofs. I told you earlier that we categorize roofs by pitch and by their moisture management strategy. I'm sure at least some of you were a bit confused by that. Isn't the moisture management strategy of all roofs the same, just to keep rain out? Yes, but that's not the moisture we're talking about in this case. We vent roofs to remove moisture generated inside the building. When we talk about designing our building enclosures in a climate appropriate way, most of us think first of the exterior climate, but walls, roofs, and foundations have two sides and we must account for the climate, the loads, on both sides, not just the outside. We generate a lot of moisture inside our buildings just by occupying them, by cooking, cleaning, breathing, whatever. And when this moisture, which is usually water vapor in the air, reaches cold surfaces within our wall and roof assemblies, we can get condensation, which can lead to corrosion, rot, mold, and odors. And here, it will help to understand a bit more about condensation. For condensation to occur, moisture, usually moisture-laden air, must reach a cold surface. To prevent condensation, we have three options. We can warm the condensing surface, so no cold surface and no condensation. We can prevent moisture from reaching the cold surface somehow or we can remove moisture from the environment, usually by dehumidifying. Now, I said there were three options to prevent condensation, but in building design, we don't actually need to prevent condensation. What we need to do is control condensation. A little bit of condensation is okay, as long as it's not so bad that it causes our building materials to decay. So this introduces some flexibility here. We now have a fourth option. We can allow the condensation to occur, but either use materials that aren't at risk of damage or provide enough drying to prevent damage. In building design, we usually pursue these four strategies in combination. Let's take a look at that as it applies to vented roofs. 
A vented roof provides air intake at the soffits and outlets at the ridge. In this super popular configuration that I'm showing you now, we use baffles to keep that vent space clear of insulation so the air has a pathway from low to high. Here's what a baffle looks like in a real roof. And here's an example of a nice slot style soffit vent as opposed to the more common louvered soffit vents. And here are some images of a ridge vent. Now that you know what it looks like, let's talk more about the moisture management part because a lot of people miss some of the nuance and that can actually have potentially significant consequences. Let's go back to our section drawing. The cold surface we care about is the roof sheathing. The insulation is underneath it, so we know it will be cold in winter. Our framing, which isn't shown in this section, will also be cold, so we're concerned about that too. Our moisture source is from the interior and it's generated by occupants. But how does our moisture source get from the interior to the roof sheathing and framing? It passes through our ceiling assembly through the materials themselves and through small discontinuities in construction, like where the drywall and the ceiling meets the drywall or the trim at the walls, small openings at lights and attic hatches. Even though our ceilings look continuous, there are typically lots of small pathways for air and moisture. And I want to tell you a few things about that. The first is that these holes are not, usually anyway, signs of poor construction. And not very much moisture-laden air gets through them. But because it can be really cold in winter, even a small amount of interior air can be problematic but it's only a problem if we don't design for it, and we do, by venting the roof to remove that moisture. To be really clear about this, let's look again at our condensation control options and talk through specifically which strategies we're implementing. We are not warming the condensing surface. Our sheathing and framing are uninsulated, they're still cold. We are reducing, but not eliminating, the amount of moisture that can reach our condensing surface by having a ceiling and being pretty decent about air sealing it. We're not taking any special steps to dehumidify the interior. We are providing moisture removal and drying by venting with exterior air. And this fourth strategy is the main one at play in vented, vented roof assemblies. What's absolutely lovely is that it's low cost, not terribly difficult to design and install, and it works in every climate, even very cold ones. Before we conclude, I want to touch on a few miscellaneous points. I've shown you the most classic vented roof unconditioned attic example, but you can also use the same approach to moisture control if the ceiling is vaulted. You'll just want baffles across the whole roof, not just the edge. You'll want to make sure, however, that those baffles are made of a vapor open material so that drying can still occur through them. So basically, you'll want to avoid plastic baffles. Foam baffles usually work fine because even though we think of foams as being mostly vapor closed, the ones used for roof baffles are thin and still relatively vapor open. Baffles are also made of cardboard and those work as well. The last thing I want to touch on are some of the downsides to venting roofs. One is that venting depends on air exchange using exterior air. And this is easiest when the inlets are low and the outlets are high, and there's a clear path for air between the two. This is a real problem on complicated roof lines, more common on large custom homes. Also, while the building code still permits it, both residentially and commercially, I do not recommend attempting to vent low slope, flat roofs, especially in cold climates. It is just too risky. And it's actually risky in two ways. One is that you're not bringing in enough exterior air to remove enough moisture and your roof might fail. The other is that if your ceiling isn't airtight enough, you end up venting, venting with interior air instead of exterior air. And this makes your moisture problem even worse. But moisture problems aside, venting low slope roofs presents us with an unacceptable fire risk. A leaky ceiling and rooftop vents on a low slope roof creates an open chimney 
And speaking of fire, venting pitched roofs is also a fire hazard if you're building in an area prone to wildfires. Burning embers can be sucked in the soffit vents and more easily spread a fire. For similar reasons, sometimes vented roofs are sometimes prohibited in areas that have the kind of termites that fly. In designing a roof, it's obviously important to take all of this seriously. In general, and for a great many buildings, venting the roof is a simple, elegant, and economical approach to addressing some pretty complex issues.